Hey, shalom to the most high Christ bless. We're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. All right. Uh, is anybody at home who can scribe for me? <laughs> anybody at home who can scribe? Shalom, <laughs> most sign Christ bless you. Most sign Christ bless you all. Is there anybody who could scrap for me? Brothers at home. At the leisure to scribe. All right. Lord's Lord, somebody comes in who was able to scribe. All right. So I see Brother Grady. Okay. All praises, Grady. Thank you, sir. All praise to the most high. All right. So today we're dealing with um we're dealing with things that can't normally be seen on the surface. We're dealing with topic of the classes, healing, uh, spiritual wounds and mental scars. All right. Uh, many times, uh we have become a product of communication, whether it be th from our spouse that was negative and harmful, whether it be from our parents growing up, communication that was negative and harmful, whether it be our brothers, sisters, cousins, whether it's been a teacher. Um, we have been we have been shaped by that interaction from childhood and up, and these things a lot of times affect us as adults. Uh, quite as cut, of course. 
Um, so we're gonna open up this article. Um, read the article. I'm actually gonna post the article in the link for those of you who want to read it um, later on as well. I'm um, go ahead and start that. Seven consequences of verbal abuse. All right. Uh, let them know who uh, created it. Written by Emily A. Sullivan. All right, go ahead. Consequences of verbal abuse can creep up on anyone suffering abuse, mm -hmm. causing severe and lasting effects. Mm -hmm. Causing what? Severe and lasting effects. So a lot of times we only take, the only abuse we take seriously is physical abuse. But um, this article says that even verbal and mental abuse can have severe and lasting effects, meaning what? Well on into your adulthood, for example. And if it happens to you in your adults, it can carry on well on into your elderly life. All right? So read that again. Consequences of verbal abuse mm -hmm. can creep up on anyone suffering abuse, mm -hmm. causing severe and lasting effects. Mm -hmm. Verbal abuse in relationships begins slowly and then typically gets progressively worse. Mm -hmm. The abuse serving as a catalyst for dangerous psychological consequences for the victim. Right. It says that this abuse serves for a dangerous catalyst for the victim. So read on. A verbally abusive relationship can cause a person to become plagued with depression, mood swings, lowered self-esteem, mm -hmm. misplaced guilt, mm -hmm. isolation, mm -hmm. loneliness, mm -hmm. and post-traumatic stress disorder. So we're reading seven consequences of verbal abuse, whether it happened when you was a child, with your parents, in school, bullies, whatever the case may be, right? Um, a lot of these things have long-lasting effects. So we're going to read the effects. It says seven consequences. Read that again. Consequences of verbal abuse. So read, read them again at the bottom. They, uh, depression. Uh -huh. Mood swings. So it says depression. Mood swings. Come on. Lowered self esteem. Lowered self esteem is one. Come on. Misplaced guilt. Misplaced guilt is one. Isolation. Isolation is one. Loneliness. Loneliness. And post traumatic stress disorder. And what? Post traumatic stress disorder. Post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, also abbreviated PTSD which is what soldiers in Iraq or Iran come back home and suffer from, all right? Uh, long-lasting, long-lasting, mentally disturbed. All right, so read on. Seven consequences of verbal abuse. Number mm -hmm. one, depression. depression. Depression is an understandable consequence of verbal abuse, mm -hmm. especially prolonged abuse. Mm -hmm. Common symptoms associated with depression include sadness. Include what? Sadness. Sadness. Many of y'all are in the truth to this day, and y'all are plagued with sadness because of something that happened to you a long time ago. Read on. Hopelessness. What did it say? Hopelessness. Hopelessness. Many of you are in this truth. You have learned what it means to be a good father, a good husband, a prophet for your nation, but you are plagued with what? Hopelessness. Hopelessness. You feel like you just can't cut it. You feel like there is no hope for you. Many of you women have come to this truth. I have learned what it takes to be a good mother. I have learned what it takes to be a good sister and an example, but guess what? You are still plagued with hopelessness. Read on. Feelings of emptiness. What? Feelings of emptiness. It says also feeling of emptiness. Like you don't really have any value. Feelings of emptiness. Read on. Trouble sleeping mm -hmm. or even oversleeping. Trouble sleeping or oversleeping. You just can't get up. Scripture say joy comes in the morning, but you wake up in the morning, ain't no joy. You just land up. You land up till, till, till early evening. Read on. You may find yourself unhappy doing things you once loved or feeling like things will never get better. Mm -hmm. Verbal abuse can cause depression for the victim after weeks, months, or even years of feeling worn down by the abuser. Mm -hmm. Read on. And that's that's a lot of you. A lot of you have had these things, but guess what? You come to this truth, and there is no long couch for you. You understand? But guess what? The couch is the Bible. You understand? The psychiatric evaluation starts with you what? Examine yourself in the scriptures. But what? Many times we don't talk about these things. If it's, if it's not a physical scar it's not a physical one we feel like it's not important but it is important because it's going to affect the way you behave with brothers affect the way you behave with sisters whether you abuse people whether you abuse your sisters why because a lot of times victims become abusers and then it's a cycle it's a vicious cycle right so read on number two mood swings mm -hmm. mood swings are a pretty standard psychological side effect for people involved in toxic relationships mm -hmm. abusive relationships work in cycles that entail honeymoon periods in which everyone feels happy and in love and then a buildup of tension mm -hmm. that leads to an abusive episode 
and then a period of remorse that leads back to the honeymoon phase. So, the article is saying that many people, many new people, in this truth, men or women, y'all suffer from mood swings. Mood swings. One minute you happy, one minute you sad, one minute you angry, next minute you joyful. Y'all have mood swings. It says that is a direct consequence of you growing up with what? Mental abuse, psychological abuse. You understand? You all over the place. Why? Because growing up around your parent, your parent was all over the place. Your parent like, oh, man, I love you so much. And then tell you, oh, you ain't never going to mount nothing. So now you carry that on what? Into your adulthood. Now you all over the place. Shalom, so I Don't nobody love me. So that's what you're talking about. Don't nobody love me. People always want something from me. What are you talking about? Because we just helped you move. <laughs> we just helped you move yesterday. Yeah, but y'all did that because I asked y'all. What are you talking about? But y'all got mood swings. Why? Because y'all grew up around somebody with mood swings. And then you carry that to what? Your adulthood. You know? Naturally, all of those ups and downs can have a person feeling mood swings. Mm -hmm. Mood swings can be chaotic and confusing, mm -hmm. causing a person to feel like he or she can't trust his or her own judgment or feelings. You see, you see that? It says people with mood swings, they feel like they can't trust their own judgment or feelings. Because you're mindful of how you are. So then you're like, yeah, I think I want to, um, I think I want to, um, I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm a move, but you know, I don't think it's a good idea for me to move. What was that brother? Yeah. I think I'm gonna go ahead and head to, um, I'm gonna go ahead and move. I think that's the best, best thing for me is for my spirit is I go ahead and move. But you know, I, I, it may be a good idea if I say here. Okay, brother. All right. But the problem is with is that you have some mental issues. And because of your mood swings, you don't trust your own judgments. You don't trust your own decisions. So read on. Number three, mm -hmm. lower self-esteem. Hold on. What's the third consequence of growing up um, being mentally abused, psychologically abused? What's the third consequence? Lower self-esteem. And remember, this abuse could have came uh, in school. This abuse could have came from your parents. This abuse could have came from a spouse. You understand? So what's the third consequence again? Lower self-esteem. It says the third consequence of you growing up being uh, abused mentally or, or verbally or psychologically is lower self-esteem. So let's read about that. Victims of verbal abuse mm -hmm. have likely been called terrible names, mm -hmm. belittled, degraded, mm -hmm. blamed for things they feel they had no control over, mm -hmm. screamed at, mm -hmm. and bullied in ways that would make a major blow to anyone's self-esteem and ability to value oneself. Mm -hmm. Perpetual hypercriticism can work like an ice pick, mm -hmm. picking away until there's nothing but pieces everywhere. It says perpetual hypercriticism. That you that spirit that when you deal with people, they can never catch a break. You understand? It says perpetual hypercritic. Read the thing from the top, bro. We're reading the third effect of what? Mental abuse on a person. This is the third effect on mental psychological abuse on a person. And what is the third effect? Lower self-esteem. The third effect is lower self-esteem. Listen good, come on. Victims of verbal abuse mm -hmm. have likely been called terrible names. They've been called terrible names, right? Belittled. They've been belittled. Degraded. They've been degraded. Come on. Blamed for things they feel they had no control over. How many of y'all by a spouse got blamed for something that you had no control over? You crashed the car. What happened? They were in me. Oh, you just stupid. You're dumb. You're good for nothing, woman. But I got I got rear ended. Even even the insurance says they fought if I get rear ended. But but I I bet you was breaking. Yes, my lord. Read that thing again. Victims of verbal abuse have mm -hmm. likely been called terrible names, mm -hmm. belittled, degraded, blamed for things they feel they had no control over. They've been belittled, degraded, and blamed for things they feel they have no control over. Read on. Screamed at. Been screamed at. Read on. And bullied in ways that will take a major blow to anyone's self-esteem and ability to value oneself. So watch. Rush is good heavy. Come on. Perpetual hypercriticism. Because there's nothing wrong with constructive criticism. But this is called what? Perpetual. Perpetual meaning long-lasting what? Hyper, hyper criticism. Hyper criticism. You got to talk about everything. Something's wrong with your shoes. And I don't like your toes. And uh, your beard patchy. And the problem with you, you, you stand up straight. And then you don't read enough. And what you need to do is go back to school. But if you go to school, you're going to mount to nothing. Perpetual hyper criticism. Read. Can work like an ice pick. It works like an ice pick, really. 
picking away until there's nothing but pieces everywhere. What did it say? Picking away until there's nothing but pieces everywhere. How many of us had parents like that? How many of us had teachers like that? How many of us are now adults in this truth and trying to figure out what's wrong with our spirit? We don't. The stress of the criticism can cause a person to feel like he or she cannot perform simple tasks effectively. You see that? It says the effects of perpetual hypercriticism can make somebody believe they cannot even perform simple tasks effectively. That person who got no faith in themselves. You understand? The person who be constantly told what to do when they know what to do. They know exactly what to do. You understand? That's that. This is an effect right here. Freedom. And leads to feelings of worthlessness. And leads to what? Feelings of worthlessness. Leads to feelings of worthlessness. Read the next one. Number four, mm -hmm. misplaced guilt. So then you got misplaced guilt. The four consequences of what? You being mentally abused. You being verbally abused, psychologically abused, whether it been by a spouse, whether it been by a parent, whatever the case may be. So it says this is the fourth consequence. Read. Misplaced guilt. You got misplaced guilt. So you feel guilty, but you don't feel guilty about the right things. Let's see. Come on. Most people who have suffered verbal abuse mm -hmm. have heard again and again that everything that goes wrong, and I mean everything, mm -hmm. including the price of the tea in China. Including the what? The price of the tea in China. Which ain't supposed to matter. Read. It's all their fault. It's Damn gas went up with your light skinned itself. Read on. Being told repeatedly that you are at fault and to blame for anything negative that happens in your partner's life, as well as the abuse you are suffering, is at first is yeah. at first seemingly ludicrous, mm -hmm. but eventually it is accepted as an obvious truth that the sky is blue and grass is green. You see that? This misplaced guilt. So now, you you being blamed for everything so much that you believe you you actually start to believe that everything is your fault. You're the reason why your daddy left. You like how can I be the reason why you left? Two weeks later, you keep hearing you're the reason why your daddy left. You like I'm the reason why my daddy left. And now you got a misplaced guilt within yourself. Now you feel like what you indebted to your mother, who had to suffer the loss of your father because that was your fault. It was your fault that she stepped out on him. It was your fault she couldn't shut up big mouth. But somehow you believe that what. Is your fault because she keeps telling you that it's your fault. So now you got a misplaced guilt. You know what I'm saying? It's your fault being evicted. It's not her fault that she overspent money or his fault that he overspent money and couldn't handle the finances and got the eviction notice and then still couldn't get the money up. You know what I'm saying? Somehow it's your fault because y'all run around the house too much because he got to put food and tape. Somehow it, it becomes your fault that y'all got evicted and y'all live in the uncle house and y'all live in the auntie house. Somehow it's y'all fault. Even though they laid down and had you. And then have the finances to take care of you. Somehow it's y'all fault that life is so terrible. And you keep hearing that over and over and over again. Y'all keep y'all keep running in and out the house. Light bill gonna be sky high. Maybe the light bill is sky high because we got four air conditioners in every window. Maybe that's why the light is sky high. And they all leaking. But you know, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You know what? It's my fault. Misplaced guilt again. Read on. This misplaced guilt will likely originate within the confines of the relationship, but then seep out in other areas of the victim's life. Mm -hmm. Other relationships. So it says this this misplaced guilt, it may, it may start off um, in whatever instant it began, but it will seek out into other areas of your life. Meaning so as you get older and now you got your own children, um, as you uh, deal, with a, deal with a spouse, a husband, or a wife, these, what you've been through, starts to seek out into those areas as well. So that toxic... I mean, environment you're in, you begin to recreate that same toxic environment. Why? Because uh, as sick as it is, it becomes normal to you. You understand? So read on. Uh, this misplaced guilt will likely originate within the confines of the relationship, but then seep out into other areas of the victim's life, mm -hmm. other relationships, mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. his or her own misfortunes, or random misfortunes of the people in his or her life. Mm -hmm. We don't. Number five, mm -hmm. isolation. This is the fifth thing. This is the fifth consequence of you being mentally abused, whether it been at school, by other uh, classmates, whether it been by uh, teachers, whether it's by your parents, whether it's by brother, sister, sibling, cousin, you understand? Whether it's been by spouse, this is the fifth consequence. Come on. Isolation. No, isolation is the fifth one. Come on. Verbal abuse in relationships often leads to friend and family estrangement. Mm -hmm. alienating the victim from loved ones. Mm -hmm. First, 
You may choose to spend all of your time with your new partner mm -hmm. because you're happy and in love. Mm -hmm. Then you may start to pull away from social gatherings because your partner doesn't like certain friends or family members. Mm -hmm. Then you find yourself defensive of or embarrassed by the relationship you found yourself in. Mm -hmm. So you isolate yourself. Mm -hmm. Isolating yourself is a progressive pattern that begins with an ignored call or missed family event here or there. But then one day, you realize you haven't seen your mom in months and your best friend has found a new best friend. Mm -hmm. So isolation is another what? Is another, it's a defense mechanism from you what? Growing up in what? Mental abu mentally abusive situations, verbally abusive situations. So a defense mechanism that you adopt is isolation. Here's what I'll do. I'll just find somebody that's, that's cool. I'll find somebody that's loving and then I'll just spend all my time with them. But what ends up happening over time? You end up what? Getting on a last nerve. You end up being too clingy. And then you can now what? Ruin the relationship that was actually uh, positive for you. Why? Because you don't you don't want to let them breathe. You, they can't hang out with other people. You have a problem with everybody hang out with you. the person you love. Okay, where you going? Mom house. Well, you know your mom ain't no damn good. Okay, your mom ain't neither. But you were just over there yesterday. You understand? Um, where you going? Well, me and sisters we have to go go see a movie. Yeah, but them sisters they just came in. Can't trust them sisters. Why don't you go out with me? So by you being really mentally abused, now you want to hold on to that one person because you don't trust other people. Understand, and then you the person you hold on to, if they hang out with other people, now what you offended by that. You understand? Now you are you intimidated by that, and you want to try and, and be an obstacle. Um, you want to try to prevent them from having a life outside of you because you hurt, and your defense mechanism is isolation. And you're usually gonna take one person with you as you isolate yourself, and then you want to hold them for yourself. Read the next one. Number six, loneliness. The sixth uh, uh effect or consequence is loneliness so come on loneliness is different from isolation mm -hmm. because a person can feel lonely even in the company of others a person can what feel lonely mm -hmm. even in the company of others a person could be at a cookout with all the brothers and sisters and be like man don't nobody talk to me so so, so how'd you get here how'd you get the memo i just like don't nobody call me i called you and told you it was starting at five yeah but you know that was for this I'm talking about that. What are you talking about is the question. But that's the thing. Some of you, because of what's, how you were raised up and what you went through, you feel lonely even when you're surrounded by other people. You understand? You, you can share the same space but feel like you're on a different island somewhere. So let's read about that. To feel lonely can be to feel alone, mm -hmm. misunderstood, uncared for, without friends or love, mm -hmm. without companionship, mm -hmm. etc. It is entirely possible feel lonely while sitting right next to your partner mm -hmm. or falling asleep next to someone at night because loneliness is a mental symptom rather than a physical state of being loneliness is a what loneliness is a mental symptom it says loneliness has nothing to do with reality it says loneliness is a mental system for example you got brother a he's at home he getting his study on he had a wonderful day eight new precepts all praise we have been we found one new precept brother found eight new precepts brother ate him a bag of doritos brother had a wonderful day he gonna get him some sleep he got work tomorrow you got brother b brother b is at home he's also studying the scriptures he also found eight new precepts you understand he also ate a bag of doritos but he he goes to bed what heavy hearted and depressed because he feels like no one loves him nobody called him nobody texts him nobody came to his house today therefore he feels what he feels inadequate. He feels like there's something wrong with him. He feels like his life is not as good as everybody else's life. You know what I'm saying? He feels like he had a lonely day. Why? Because loneliness has nothing to do with the situation. Loneliness is up here. You understand? So we don't. Loneliness is a mental symptom rather than a physical state of being. Mm -hmm. Loneliness is a common consequence of verbal abuse because the victim feels rejected and cast aside from his or her partner as well as isolated from friends and family. Mm -hmm. So now, let's read, we on number seven? Yes, sir. We're gonna read the seventh consequence of mental and verbal abuse, come on. Number seven, post-traumatic stress disorder. So I seen somebody post that in the comments earlier. The seventh consequence is post-traumatic stress disorder. That's what people suffer from who go to war, shoot AKs, shoot to kill, pass ammunition, shoot to kill, pass ammunition. Bombs blowing off, grenades, stun grenades, you just, it, it just, 
all hell is breaking loose. When they when they return home to regular society, they have a lot of issues. You understand? It's called PTSD, right? So we're gonna read about how those of you who suffer from mental and verbal abuse also have PTSD. And then we're gonna, of course, we're gonna get to the scriptures momentarily. So y'all just um be patient with me. So let's read the last one. Come on. Post traumatic stress disorder is mm -hmm. a dangerous and understandable consequence of verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. Being beaten down by verbal abuse is extremely traumatic. Mm -hmm. The trauma of abuse carries over into new relationships. It carries over where? Into new relationships. Like, for example, into this truth. Because before you could be beat down verbally for so long, and that's that's traumatizing. People think, oh, they didn't hit me. Y'all yeah, was my husband. Uh, and you know, I had a bad marriage. I've, I've been divorced for 20 years. Oh, so uh, what was going on in the marriage? Oh, well, he never put his hands on me. We never actually if he put his hands on you. That's not the only way to abuse somebody. So, some studies say that mental and verbal abuse, psychological abuse, is actually worse and more harmful than physical abuse. You understand? So, read that again. Post traumatic stress disorder is a dangerous and understandable consequence of verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. Being beaten down by verbal abuse is extremely traumatic. Mm -hmm. The trauma of abuse carries over into new relationships. Right, come on. Romantic, romantic, platonic, platonic relationships, professional, professional, and familial. And what? Familial. And familial relationships. So it's just showing you that that PTSD, that stress that you got from growing up getting beat down with words, that carries over into new relationships. And what's the main focus right now? Your marriage today, and then there's truth today around brothers and sisters today. That carries over. So now, because you were beat down with words, you expect us to be down with words. Because you were beat down, you were broken down mentally. You expect us. When you see our faces, you see what? You see your angry father's face. When you see our faces, you see your angry mother's face. You see that that boyfriend who used to smack you beside your head and then curse you out. You see him when you look at us. So those things carry over. And then what? You have a a, a distrustful leadership. You have a distrust for the sister next to you who want the kingdom just like you. You got a distrust for the brother next to you who want the kingdom just like you. And why is that? It's because of what happened to you. And you carrying all that into the truth, whether you know it or not. Some of y'all don't even know. That's what Lord's will this class be edifying. So is it more than that? Yeah. Go ahead. Because the trauma comes from the subsequent communication issues, mm -hmm. self-doubt mm -hmm. and fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. You may find yourself extremely sensitive to a tense conversation or really hard on yourself for a minor folk at work. So people who suffer from being beat down with words their whole life, it says you might find yourself what? Extremely sensitive. You might find yourself extremely sensitive where? To a tense conversation. You be you in a conversation, it's getting tense. You you feel like oh, I'm offended. What you offended about? I don't, I don't really know. That's because you're not offended. You understand? You're just a product of what? The verbal and mental down that you experience in your life you understand so it says you'll be the one who's sensitive when you have an intense conversation it, it may be a, a conversation of constructive criticism to build you up brother i noticed this about you uh, i want you to study more i want you to work on um your precepts um when, when you teach make sure you speak with boldness and you brother in conversation he he, he said he like yeah you know what i can't do nothing right man you know i'm, I'm probably gonna separate myself from the body brother i'm trying to build you up but the problem is again a lot of people are suffering from PTSD and this truth and never been to war. No purple heart, but suffering from PTSD. Read that. You may find yourself extremely sensitive to a tense conversation or really hard on yourself for a minor faux pas at work. Mm -hmm. Disorders like PTSD can pop up unexpectedly, mm -hmm. making you feel mentally unstable over things you think you should have a handle on. Mm -hmm. Is it a morning? These seven consequences. Of verbal abuse in relationships are devastating to a person's quality of life. Mm -hmm. It can be difficult to move on and find happiness when you are still carrying around these negative side effects of toxic love. The good news is none of these consequences of verbal abuse have to be permanent. What's up? None of these consequences of verbal abuse have to be permanent. So with that, let's get James 3 now. None of these consequences have to be permanent. So, all right, let's get James 3. James chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 3. James chapter 3 and verse 3. So now we're going to go into the Bible. And we're going to deal with these things. We're going to validate that a lot of things in this article was true. And then we're going to get some healing for those who suffer from these things. So let's read James 3. Let's start at verse 3. Behold, 
We put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So James is starting off with a with an illustration, right? Or an analogy, right? So read the analogy again. I want you to refocus and pay attention. So read that again. James chapter three, verse three. Come on. Behold. Behold, come on. We put bits in the horses' mouths. Horses are huge, especially Clydesdales, right? They huge, they huge creatures, beasts, right? It says, but we put bits in the horse's mouth. Little small, little, little, little um, what they call them, little small snacks, uh, kibbles and bits, right? It says we put bits in the horse's mouth, read. That they may obey us. That they may obey. With those little bits, those little bitty small things that you might think of as insignificant, um, we do what? They what? That they may obey us. We can make a large horse that can kick our forehead off, obey us, with small kibbles and bits, small snacks they feed it, they eat up out of our hand. Read on. And we turn about their whole body. It says, and we turn about the whole body. A small thing could turn a huge horse. So keep that in mind. Read on. Behold also the ship. It says, now think about the ships that are in the ocean. Read. Which though they be so great. Which though they be so great, they massive ships, right? Come on. And are driven of fierce wind. And it take a fierce wind to push one of those ships, right? Read. Yet are they turned about with a very small hind. With a very small what? Helm. helm. But, the, but it says even a very, very small helm or a small wind could carry them about. Read on. Whithersoever the governor listed. You said that with, with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. So what is it showing you? A massive ship and a huge horse can be carried about and moved by small helms and bits. You can move a great horse that weighs thousands of pounds with just small pieces, small crumbs in your hand. And it, it'll do whatever you want. It'll obey you. So now, what's the point of all this? Watch this. Even so. What'd it say? Even so. Even so, meaning in the same exact way, you can move a huge horse with small pieces of food in your hand. Read. The tongue is a little member. The tongue is a little member. It's, it's small bits, like the same ones you put into the horse's mouth to control it. Read. And boast great things. It says that the tongue boasts of great things. It can accomplish great things. Read on. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. You said it says, Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Where's the fire coming from? It's coming from the mouth of people. Read. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Read. So is the tongue among our members mm -hmm. that it defileth the whole body. It does what? Defileth the whole body. It says it can defile the whole body. Read on. And setteth on fire the course of nature, mm -hmm. and it is set on fire hell. so guess what the mouth can destroy people that's what it's showing you you understand a very very small member could destroy you it can control you it can make you obey it the same way you can give bits into the horse's mouth and make the horse obey you the same way a huge ship is moving by a very very small helm you understand it's showing you the same way those things occur the same way the mouth can what destroy people the mouth can uh, control people make people obey them you understand that's what it's showing you. So, what what does it all begin? The mental abuse, the, the the fiery destruction for many of us. Where did it all begin? Let's get Sirach. Sirach three. Let's see where, where it all begins for many of us. Sirach three, and we're gonna start at verse nine. Sirach chapter three and verse nine. Mm -hmm. For the blessing of the Father establishes the houses of children. So a blessing is when you speak life over an individual. Blessings we speak good things over an individual, right? It says the blessing of the Father, it does what? Establishes the houses of children. It says it establishes the houses of children. Meaning what? A father's blessing, like, for example, son, you're going to get older. Um, you're going to be a good man. I see it in you. You're going to be a good father. Um, You're going to raise your family. You're going to take care of your family. You're going to be the rock for your family. And even after I'm dead and gone, you're going to carry on a torch. You're going to carry the load that I carry. That's what you're going to do, son. And then what will a child do? What a young son do or a young, uh, a young lady do? She will remember the blessing of the father. My father told me that, that I'm a princess. My father told me that I'm a god on earth. My father told me that when he's dead and gone, I got to carry the weight for the family. And that's what I intend to do. You understand? The blessing of the father, it establishes the house of children. You understand? So the, those kind and good words over the soul... Those things, you can always uh, recant those things and bring those things back for later to what? Give you strength for the future. Keep you grounded. Keep you focused on what your path is. Your father might have, may have uh, spoke a certain occupation of you. Um, I told his daughter, you're going to be a nurse or you're going to be a doctor 
um, you're going to be a teacher. I see the spirit on you. You understand? And then all your life, it, when, when uh, it, it got hard in, in undergrad, it got hard in college, whatever case may be, you remember that my father told me that I'm going to be a doctor. So I'm going to press forward. My father told me I'm going to be a nurse. So I'm these classes these classes getting uh, a nuisance. But guess what? I'm going to keep it moving. Why? Because that your father's blessing doesn't establish you. A blessing is what? Something good that's spoken over you. The opposite of mental abuse. The opposite of verbal abuse. You understand? Read nine again. For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children. Read. But the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. You see that? It says the what? The curse of the mother rooted out foundations. So it says, but the curse of the mother, it rooted out foundations. So what? The evil thing that's spoken over you. You understand? So evil things are spoken. Verbal abuse, psychological abuse, it says it rooted out foundations. For example, uh, uh, you ain't never going to amount to nothing. Uh, you just like your no good daddy. Those things root out foundations. So now guess what? You in school, exams is getting heavy, tests is getting tough. The only thing you can remember is that you ain't going to amount to nothing. You just like your no good daddy who might be in prison, who might uh, got put to death through um, gun violence or robbing a bank or robbing a liquor store. You might got put to death by the police or something. And the only thing you can think of when you think of this is your mother telling you, you like, dang, is it A or C? And all you hear is, you know, like no good daddy. You just put all the above. I don't know. One of them got to work. Hopefully, I get partial credit. I put all the above. Why? Because you 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 have nothing to pull from. Because you've been told that what you ain't gonna amount to nothing. You nothing like your no good daddy. Read on. Verse ten. Mm -hmm. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father, mm -hmm. for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. Read that part again. Glory not in the dishonor of thy father. It says, "Don't glory in the dishonor of your father." A lot of mothers they they like to mention a father's dishonor to their children. But the Bible says, glory not in the dishonor of thy father. Read on. For thy father's dishonor mm. is no glory unto thee. It says, for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee. You understand? So you tell your child, oh, your daddy, your daddy was a rolling stone. Your daddy ain't never have a job. That's no honor for the child because the child don't remember that. You understand? That's another form of mental and verbal abuse, psychological abuse. Oh, your daddy, he was always in jail. For nothing, he had six different baby moments. He just couldn't do right. You might not be um, abusing them directly, but it's abuse nonetheless. Because guess what? Uh, the father is where you your self image. So if you are constantly abusing the person who who loins I came from, how do you think I feel about myself? The apple don't fall far from the tree. So that that's another thing that we got to get out of, especially in this truth. We should, it, it should not be named amongst us when we talking about um, somebody's father or grandfather. We shouldn't be doing that in this truth. Why? Because that's where we get our self-image from, our self-portrait. Read on. Verse 11. Mm. For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father. Read. And a mother in this honor is a reproach to the children. And, and you should be talking about how somebody's mama is, is a dragon. You understand? They eight years old. You, smell, you, know, you know your mama a dragon, right? You, you know your mama no good. So if you're telling the daughter that her mother is no good, what are you saying about the daughter? You see, you, you had to examine that. You had to examine how um, how harmful words can be, and how and how deep words can penetrate. You understand? Read that again. Verse eleven: For the glory of a man is from the honor of his father, mm. and a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. You see that? And a mother in dishonor—that's a reproach to the children. Let's get Hebrews. Hebrews twelve. Hebrews twelve. Let's start at verse nine. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, mm. and we gave them reference. It says we have fathers after the flesh, right? Parents after the flesh, meaning uh, biological, right? It says, and they did what? And they corrected us. They corrected us, read on. And we gave them reverence. It says, and we gave them reverence. They, whatever uh, punishment, whatever correction they gave us, we took it and we gave them reverence, right? Come on. Shall we not much rather be in subjection? unto the father of spirits mm -hmm. and live shall we not much rather be in subjection to the father of spirits and live meaning what the most high as he deals with us through what through our leadership right we don't know. for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure mm -hmm. but he for but hold he, on read the last part again for verily for they verily for a few days mm -hmm. chastened us after their own pleasure you see that a lot of times the way they corrected us our parents who were not uh, uh, in this truth, who are not keeping God's law, and not know the color of Christ, and not know their nationality. The way they dealt with us a lot of times was out of order. 
Read that part again. Read what it said. For they there for a few days, uh -huh. chastened us after their own pleasure. Well, they chastened us uh, may not have been according to the Bible. Maybe maybe they, they didn't beat us on our sides. Maybe, maybe they never uh, spoke a blessing over us. Maybe they, they never corrected us with the scriptures and showed us what we erred according to what God says. Maybe just according to, um, to their uh, outrageous standard for us. You understand? Maybe it was that perpetual hypercriticism. You understand? How they dealt with us according to their own pleasure. They correct us according to how, what they thought. And, and then them, they, without this truth, were a product of society. And what do you have in society besides filth and chaos and disorder? But, that, but a lot of us, we were raised up in that, and we were corrected according to their own what? Pleasures, meaning their own mindsets. Read that again. For they verily, for a few days, chastened us after their own pleasure. Mm -hmm. But he, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. Now, go back to Sirach 3 and 9. So, I want that to show that many times I our biological parents, um, especially those who are outside the truth, and that's the majority of us, over 90% of us, were raised by parents who were not keeping God's laws, didn't know their nationality, didn't know what color Christ was. So how could they possibly see any good in us? How could they possibly see Christ in us, except except they, they, they upbringing must have had to have been tight for them to see any good in us? You understand? So with that being said, with that being said, we just read over there that they dealt with us according to their own pleasure. Many times the things, how they brought us up, it was a slave upbringing. And it was extreme. You understand? It was extreme. And in their mind, I can guarantee you, majority of them thought that it was for our own good. I'm about to curse you out. It's for your own good. You understand? I'm, I'm telling you, you, you work with us, but it's for your own good. No, I'm trying to get a breakthrough out of you. But really, they just breaking you. You understand? Really, your spirit is through. You understand? But there ain't no breakthrough. But a lot of times, the way they dealt with us, whether it was verbal abuse, psychological abuse, those things were what? Destructive to our spirits. Now we, now we adults. His truth and now we have what spiritual baggage mental baggage somebody trying to build you up you can try and tear you down bishop do a class you write him, you write him some hate mail you understand why because the people who broke you down you gave them reference now the people who, who are trying to build you up you give them a hard time now we paying for the wrong that was done to you and times pass so um uh, read Sirach three and nine again so rock chapter three and verse nine mm -hmm. for the blessing of the father established the houses of children mm -hmm. But the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. It says, but the curse of the mother rooted out foundations. Give me Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16. The curse of the mother rooted out foundations. So what happened when, when your mother telling you you ain't nothing, you, you're gonna be you, you're gonna be good for another but land on your back? A lot of mothers talk to their children like that. Calling 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 children the B word from a very young age, calling them H's from a very young age. You understand? And uh you think that's not having an effect? On that young sister spirit, you better believe it's having an effect on her. What happened when, because um, a, a child can also be abused just by watching the mother's example. Just by watching the stuff that she put up with, what, subconsciously, you're going to put up with the same things. Just by watching your mother get abused by a man and live with it, love that man more than she loved you probably. And you got to watch that growing up. How do you think, you think you're going to feel about yourself? Like, I, I, I guess this is what life is. I, I guess we... Me and moms, I guess we ain't worth much. If moms go through that, who, who am I to tell the man, don't put his hands on me? If moms will let this man call her a bee and call, and call, call the children little nigglets, then who, who am I to, uh, to, tell, to tell my boyfriend or my husband that I ain't allowing it? I've I seen it done. It, that, that must be normalcy, right? So read Ezekiel 16, verse 44. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 44. Mm -hmm. Behold, everyone that useth Proverbs shall use his against thee mm -hmm. saying as is the mother what it say as is the mother as is the mother read so is her daughter so is her daughter so the things that you expose your daughter to the things you say to your daughter and her upbringing guess what all you're doing is shaping yourself all over again because I have one little heart the mouth speak so what you're doing is you you're just creating a smaller version of you, you you're just creating a prototype you might be creating two point because now she desensitized to the things that you did. And now she's desensitized to the things you said. You understand? We're going we're gonna to get this second article. Uh, we're going to get article number two done by the, uh, the Huffington Post. I just posted it. Go ahead, read that. Childhood psychological abuse. So right? we're reading about childhood psychological abuse. Go ahead. 
has a long lasting impact. It has what? Long lasting impact. No, when I repent, then I no longer um gotta suffer from my mental and verbal abuse. Childhood psychological abuse uh -huh. has a long lasting impact. It has a long lasting impact. It doesn't go away when, when you put your friend is on. You understand? Read on. The findings of a recent study from the American Psychological Association are right on target. Mm -hmm. The study confirms that childhood psychological abuse has lasting significant damage equal to it has what has lasting significant damage mm -hmm. equal to or exceeding the long term consequences of physical abuse. It says that it is equal to or what. Equal to uh -huh. or exceeding or exceeding what the long term consequences mm -hmm. of physical abuse. So, according to the Huffington Post, they did a study and they said that psychological abuse has equal or more what long term or more long term consequences of what of physical abuse. So, in many cases, psychological abuse is worse than somebody putting their hands on you. Somebody put their hands on you, a, a complete stranger could, could not. Try Put a little unicorn on your head. A complete stranger could do that. You understand? But there are not many people who can what penetrate um through our perimeter like those closest to us and our upbringing and those um and those vulnerable years of us as a child when whatever a parent said was go. The sky's green. Okay, the sky's green. Um, the grass is yellow. Okay, grass is yellow. When you were a child, you would believe anything. So what happens if that person who was talking to you told you you was no good? Told you you were just like a whore mama. You can you, you just like your bum daddy. You understand? What happens then? The same person who, who told you the grass, uh, the, the color of the grass, the color of the sky, not the same person telling you that you ain't nothing. So the same way you took everything else as 100% pure gold and, uh, and, and a, a solid foundation to stand on, now you take that one look in the mirror. You remember everything mama said you was. You remember everything your daddy said you was. You remember everything your, 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 your first love said you was. Uh, read on. By Douglas LeBeer, business psychologist, psychotherapist, and writer, director of the Center of Progressive Development. Mm -hmm. The findings of a recent study from the American Psychological Association are right on target. Given the prevalence of childhood psychological abuse and the severity of harm to young victims, it should be at the forefront of mental health. Mm -hmm. The study confirms that childhood psychological abuse has lasting significant damage equal to or exceeding the long-term consequences of physical abuse. Mm -hmm. I think that psychological abuse is less visible than the examples of physical abuse that often appear in the media. So it says that um, it is less visible than physical abuse. People don't talk about this much. People don't come to the truth like, yeah, man, I'm hurting spiritually. Man, I'm hurting mentally, man. I got beat up, but I don't got no scars. You have to walk in my shoes to see my scars because my scars can't be seen. Because my scars is what? In my spirit, in my subconscious, in my conscious, in my memories. Read on. That can keep one's awareness of it under the radar. Mm -hmm. But there are many forms of psychological abuse that parents subject their children to. Mm -hmm. Among them are indifference mm -hmm. to the child's needs or temperament, which may be different from his or her siblings. Mm -hmm. Humiliation, mm -hmm. when the child fails at a task or misunderstands instructions. Mm -hmm. Denigration. So these are all things where your parents affected you. You understand? Not caring about you. Not caring about your needs. Comparing you to your brother or sister. Look at your brother. Look at him. He got straight A's. He can do no wrong. Look at you. You a C student at best. You just trying to cruise your way through school. Not understanding that you just learn different. And it's not your job. <laughs> it's not your job to, 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 to bend to the, uh, the method of teaching. You understand? Of the teacher. It's the teacher's job to bend to the method of learning of the students. You understand? But that's not the conversation that our parents had with us. It was, what are you doing with these C's? What are you doing with these D's? Look at your brother. Look at your cousin. Look, Chief Valor Victorian. He's salutatorian. What are you doing with yourself? Keep, I'm telling you right now, you keep it up. You're going to amount to nothing. You were living with me till you're 40 years old. Read that part again. Degration, mm. negative description of something the child achieves or expresses interest in. Mm -hmm. Neglect, mm -hmm. failing to provide essential emotional support or recognition of the child's needs. Mm -hmm. Unrelenting pressure. What did it say? Unrelenting pressure. Unrelenting pressure. Come on. 
to serve parental expectations. To serve who? Parental expectations. To serve parental expectations. Come on. Often accompanied by negative comparisons of the child to others who follow the program. You said negative comparison to the child by others who follow the program. You understand? But remember, this, this program is after their own pleasures. That's what we just read in Hebrews 12. They, they check us out according to their own pleasure. Because a lot of them was trying to live their life vicariously through us. So, so every obstacle they got in their way, they're trying to get us to avoid it. They got cut from the team. They trying to get you to make it in the full ride scholarship. Everything they failed at, they want you to succeed at. It's an unrelenting pressure. You understand? They they know that um, uh, um, the man they lived down with didn't love them. And just what so happened, that man might be your father. You understand? So she's telling you, um, every time you every time you go home from school five minutes late, oh, what was you doing? You was with some boy. You ain't nothing but a little hoe. Dang. Because it I, I might as well be. I might, I mean, I, I, I'm five minutes late because the teacher came me out of the class. But dang, you are my, I'm actually assumed that I done lay with somebody because I'm five minutes late. You know, call me, you know, you know, call me on my name. I'm, I, I might as well be that. If that. That's what you think of me. You know what I'm saying? It says, as a man, think of so is he. So what happens when your parents think a certain way about you? And they the ones that made you. Uh, read that again. Unrelenting pressure mm. to serve parental expectations, mm -hmm. often accompanied by negative comparisons of the child to others who follow the program. Mm -hmm. Any of the forms of psycho any of the forms of psychological abuse may be fueled by the parent's own self hatred. Come on, these, these things that the parent is saying is fueled by what? Their own self hatred. Because a lot of these things the parents have spoken to their children that was negative and harmful were fueled by the parents own self-hatred why because they believe in caesar bo caesar was your son of rodrigo you understand they um may not have made it to the place where they wanted to be in life or in society they may not have the the husband they may not have the wife they may be uh lonely you understand um and then through the course of that now everything that come out of them is straight venom they can speak no good so now everything they're saying evil about true is based off of their own self-hatred. And we know before this truth, we are filled with self-hatred. A lot of us didn't know what self-hatred was until we came into this truth. And then we realized that we, we had to change what we view our brothers, change what we view our sisters. So read that again. Any of the forms of psychological abuse may be fueled by the parents' own self-hatred, mm -hmm. jealousy, jealousy, narcissism, narcissism, come on, or other pathology, right. some illustrations. There was some illustrations. Go ahead. A child runs to the parent saying, look at my new drawing mm -hmm. or see what I did for this school project mm -hmm. and receives a curt dismissive. Don't bother me now. Mm -hmm. I'm working on something important. So you that, uh, that right that's what you call a casual dismissal. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously this thing is huge to the child. The child brought, it, brought it to mother, brought it to mother. Here, look, look what I drew. It may be a stick figure. It's okay. They learn it. You know, but they tell you, boom, look what I drew. Look what I did. This is why I use the work. Daddy, look, daddy, look, look. And you, and you like, get away from me. Casual dismissal. They Like, they mean nothing. It's a casual dismissal. We're going to read about some casual dismissals in the Bible. But, you know, failure to take a brief moment's interruption for the child will have a negative emotional impact and can accumulate. Mm -hmm. A parent consistently and vocally praises one child while so this right here is a form of this right is another form of mental and verbal and psychological abuse. It says a parent praises one child, you know, while ignoring or criticizing the child's sibling. But then you ignore and criticize the child's siblings. A lot of us was that one who was who was ignored and criticized. That was a lot of us. You understand? But the, the scripture says the Lord have chosen to base things out of the world. You understand? So read that part again, though. A parent consistently and vocally praises one child. A parent praises one child, come on. While ignoring or criticizing the child's sibling. And then they ignore or criticize the child's sibling, come on. For example, mm -hmm. wow, what you did is amazing. Mm -hmm. You are so talented. Wow, what you did is amazing. You are so talented. You, singular, you are so talented, you know. But to the child's sibling. But to the sibling, what happened? Regarding something similar. Uh -huh. Perhaps a flat. That's nice. They, they, they say what? That's nice. They say what? That's nice. So you got one option. Wow, what you did, wonderful. You are amazing. You the best. Oh, that, that's true, did? That's nice. 
Keep, keep trying. Read on. Sometimes the parent gives both responses in the presence of both the siblings. And then you give both responses in the presence of both siblings. You don't think they can see the difference? You don't think one knows they're in good standing and the other one knows that they, to you, don't mean nothing? And they go all the that Why? Because you give them their self-image. You give them the blessing or you give them the curse that roots out foundations according to what we just read in Sirach. 3, 9, and 10. Come on. An observer, an observer could see the crestfallen expression in the face of the second child. It says if there was another person in the room, they could see your child counting this fall. It says the crest what? Crestfallen expression. The crestfallen expression. We're saying the truth. They count this done fail. You could see that. Like, oh, man. The parent is crushed that the, the child to the right. A person, a, an observer in the room can see that. But you can't see that. Why? Because you're too busy being the devil the Bible speaks of. You understand? A lot of our parents were just way too busy stuck. Deal, deal on us according to their own pleasure, what they thought was right. You understand? Which was a slave upbringing. You understand? Try, trying to vote for the best out of, out of child number two, I'm giving them the benefit of no doubt. They might be trying to provoke child number two to, to greater works, but they're doing it the wrong way. Same as did. Oh, uh, you stronger than him, and and you you are weak, and really, and, and as wicked as Esau is, he trying to provoke um, more productivity, more 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 uh more cotton picked out of the one who, who he had the bag on for a second. You understand? But that's not how we supposed to deal with our children. The way Master dealt with us with a with a whip to make us uh to increase productivity. You understand? That's not the way to do it. So, is it more than that? A parent who never compliments the child and it stays alive, mm -hmm. such as in the memory of a grown man who vividly recalls that when he profoundly dressed up for his school prom as a teenager, he received a look over from one of his parents who offered just one comment. Mm -hmm. Your pants cuffs are too short. So, it says, imagine somebody going to wicked prom and then they all dressed up. It's a memorable moment. And the only thing a person remembers is they, they look up at the parents Take them words of encouragement, them, them words of admiration. I don't think they remember their parents saying, your pants cuff are too short. Read on. You'll never amount to anything. you what? You'll never amount to anything. You'll never amount to anything. Read on. You're worthless. Read. You're nothing but trouble. Mm -hmm. I wish you were never born. Mm. Why can't you be more like your sister? Why brother? can't you be more like your sister? Why can't you be more like a brother or a neighbor's child? Why can't you be more like the Jones child? Read. I've heard them all and more from the life experiences of men and women seeking to heal the early damage. Read. And sometimes directly from parents who describe and reflect upon their ways of parenting mm -hmm. as they confront the damage that comes in their different lives. Mm -hmm. All forms of psychological abuse damage the child's sense of him or herself. They do what? Damage the child's sense of him or herself. They damage the child's sense of him or herself. Read on. As well as the subsequent adult that emerges from it. And then guess what? That subsequent adult that emerges from that child as damaged will also be damaged. So what? Many of us come to the truth as what? Damaged adults. Damaged adults. Start keeping the laws, put your hair up on, and then you start pretending that everything is okay. But you never deal with what? These what? These spiritual wounds you got. These mental scars you got. So then you want to, why you can be surrounded by sisters and be like, oh, I, don't, I don't have any friends. What do you mean you don't have any friends? Maybe, maybe the problem is you never learned to love yourself or be a friend to yourself because somebody turned you against yourself at an early age. So now you feel like we can possibly love you because I don't love myself. How, how could somebody want to be a friend to me and I don't even like myself? I hate the skin that I'm in, so how could you love the skin? that I'm in. Read on. Psychological abuse has a very long shelf life. Mm. As the APA report confirmed, it found that children who are emotionally abused and neglected face similar and sometimes worse mental health problems mm. as children who are physically or sexually abused. Yet, psychological abuse is rarely addressed in prevention. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. It said that people who are psychologically abused, they are actually... They have shown worse um, actions than those who were physically abused. Worse. Read on. Go jump back up to that. Yes, sir. Children who are emotionally abused and neglected face similar and sometimes worse mental health problems. They face similar and sometimes worse 
worse mental health problems, read. As children who are physically or sexually abused. More than children who are physically or even sexually abused. That's heavy. That's heavy. Come on. Yet psychological abuse is rarely addressed in prevention. It says, it says, but even with that knowledge, it says psychological abuse is rarely addressed. People don't want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? It's the, it's the elephant in the room that no one sees. Read on. Yet it's rarely addressed in prevention programs or in treating victims. Read. The report pointed out that children who have been psychologically abused suffer from anxiety. They suffer from what? Anxiety. Anxiety. They're always nervous. They're scared to make decisions. They're scared to fail. Come on. Depression. Depression. Come on. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. Symptoms of post-traumatic stress and suicidality. And suicidality. Thoughts of suicide. Oh, man. I don't, I don't know. To, to be or not to be? That is a question. Read on. At the same rate, and in some cases, at a greater rate than children who were physically or sexually abused. So they, they suffer from thoughts of suicide more than those who are physically or sexually abused. Just by, just by your mama mentally breaking you down. Your father mentally broke you down. Your spouse mentally broke you down. Sometimes it comes from your spouse. Let's get that. Let's get Sirach 37. Sirach 37. See what the Bible says. Sirach 37. Let's start at verse 7. Sirach chapter 37, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Every counselor extolleth counsel. It says every counselor extolleth counsel, right? Come on. But there is some that counseleth for himself. It says, but there are some that do what? Counseleth for himself. When you become a relationship, guess what? Your, your spouse, um, especially for you sisters, you, you, you immediately um, take whatever words they speak to you into consideration. That's just what it is. Whatever they say, you take into consideration. It's not saying that your, your wife is lord over you, you know, um, especially in this truth, you know, that we lords of the household. But a lot of times, um, a relationship that we have prior to truth, um, we were raised up in Babylon, so you know a lot of times the mindset is 50-50. Means that what, whatever words she spoke to you, you took those things into consideration. If you were a sister, whatever words that a man spoke to you, you took those things into consideration. So he may have told you, well, man, you know, you um, you know, you work on yourself. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if we can be together if you don't work on yourself. Or, well, a lot of times men did back in the world, they broke a sister down just to go on the leash. A lot of times what sisters did back in the world, they broke a man down just so he can see all the good qualities and good attributes that drew you to him in the first place because you get to lose him. So instead of you um, being honest with yourself and dealing with your own insecurity, you chose to break him down. You chose to break him down mentally. You chose to break him down psychologically to keep him on the leash. Same thing with you men. You know she's good looking. You know she got a lot of qualities, things going for her. She can cook. She can clean. In a sense, so instead of you... Uh, dealing with your insecurity of losing that, you just chose to guess what? I'm just gonna break it down to the point where she she feels like she's good for nothing. So if she's good for nothing, then it's it's an honor for you to be with me. You wanna know I mean? read that verse again, verse seven. Verse seven. Mm. Every counselor extols counsel, mm. but there is some that counsel it for himself. Read. Beware of a counselor. Read. And know before what need he hath. It says, know before what need he hath. Read. Or he will counsel for himself. So he might need you to stay in his life. Or she might need you to stay in his life. You understand? So guess what? Now they, they counsel. The end result is just you standing in your life. They say a lot about you, but it was never to build you up. They say a lot about you, but it was never to praise you. You understand? They say a lot about you, but it's not really to guide you. It's just to guide you back to them. It's to keep you next to them. You understand? So whatever I got to say to you, to make sure that all them brothers in your inbox are just an illusion. <laughs> you understand? Whatever I got to say to you to make sure that th those degrees and certificates that you got are just an illusion to you. Whatever I got to say to you to make you think that that delicious meal you just prepared was just an illusion, I'm going to say it. To keep you under lock and key, I'm going to break you down. To keep you right here. From now, let's get uh, Sirach 11. Sirach 11. Yeah, verse 29. Sirach to 11 verse 29 mm -hmm. bring not every man into thine house but what bring not every man into thine house it says bring not every man into thy house that means be very very careful with your selection right but many times remember i say it might come from a spouse so this person is already in your house you understand or maybe i have moved in together or maybe y'all come to visit whatever case may be. but the bible says bring not every man into thine house we don't for the deceitful man for the what for the deceitful man mm -hmm. has many so the deceitful man has many trains, but he has many ways of getting his way. He has many ways of influencing you. 
You understand? That's what it's talking about. Deceitful man has many trains. You understand? Know He's deceitful. He can control you. Sirach 25. Sirach 25. Watch this. Sirach 25, read verse 23. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 23. Watch this. A wicked woman. A what? A wicked woman. A wicked woman. Come on. Abated the courage. Abate means she she can drain you dry of courage, of bravery, of any virtue, of manliness. You understand? Take you from a man to just what? My lap dog. You understand? Take you from an Israelite to a lap dog. Who you just you follow her commands, you eat out her hand. You understand? You totally are associated with your own desires and will, and you just completely bend to whatever she wants for you. You understand? It says, uh, a wicked woman, she abased the courage. Read. Make it a heavy countenance. Make it a heavy countenance. If she ain't happy, you ain't happy. If she upset, you upset. You, you worry a woman's emotions. You understand? Read on. And a wounded heart. And a wounded heart, because she, cause a woman can say anything to you and that, that, that you ain't never expected. And I ain't going to take it that far, but a woman can tell you some things and break, break you down for the next 20 years. And it, it could have been all a lie, all a lie, just to destroy you and abate the courage and then keep you wet next to her, under her skirt. Read it from the top. A wicked woman abated the courage. Read. Maketh a heavy countenance. Maketh a heavy, have a brother depressed, can't eat, can't sleep. Read. And a wounded heart. And a wounded heart? She done broke your heart now, come on. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress. When you're going through, won't even comfort you. You understand? You got to get over it. But but the moment she breaking nail, she wants you to go, oh, what happened? What finger was it? Maybe we can find it. I got scotch tape. We can do this. But she wanna come for you in your distress because your life it don't matter if it don't involve her. So again, um, over over the course of our lives, we've been mentally abused on most on numerous occasions. Like I said, it could have been teacher, friend, sister, brother. Um they, they didn't sized us up. They didn't look at us, counted us as nothing. They, they didn't look at us, counted us as unworthy, uh, not fit to tie their shoes. They Christ now, and we John the Baptist. We ain't fit to unbuckle their shoes, tie them up for nothing. You know what I'm saying? These things happen over the course of our life. Told us we won't be nothing, that we won't amount to nothing. You know what I'm saying? Let's get uh, Sirach 26. Sirach 26, and verse 5. I'm sure what God said about that. Sirach chapter 26 and verse 5. Read. There be three things that mine heart feared, mm -hmm. and for the fourth I was sore afraid. Read. The slender of a city. The slender of a city. Read. The gathering together of an unruly multitude. Read on. And a false accusation. And a what? A false accusation. There's a false accusation. Like somebody telling you, you know what? You're going to be a bum just like your daddy. But how they know that? Why would they even say that? Are they the most high? Are they Christ? They, they, know, they, they know the end from the beginning now. You knew my destiny before I was born, huh, ma? You knew my destiny before I was born, huh, dad? It says, the fourth, it says, the fourth one, a false accusation, all these are what? All these are worse than death. It, a false accusation is just some, something that people speak with their mouth. Remember, a little member destroyed. A great fire kindled, right? It says, it says, in a false accusation, all these are worse than death. Give me the accusation. Give me the definition of accusation. It says, all the, a false accusation, something that you can speak with your mouth, it says it's worse than death. Worse than death. Damn, a false accusation is worse than death. Let's see accusation. Accusation. Mm -hmm. A charge or claim that someone has done something illegal or mm -hmm. wrong. So a charge or claim that someone has done something illegal or wrong. Many times it's going to you doing something wrong. You understand? Oh, my God. You ain't half the man you should be. You ain't half the woman you should be. You an unfit mother. Oh, girl, you don't know, you know what to do with them kids. They running you out the back door. Them kids running you crazy. You can't win from losing. Oh, girl, you just chasing, you, you just chasing your tail. You, you, you lose your head if, if, if one tied to your shoulders. False accusations. You understand? It says these things are worse than death. Get Sirach 28. A false accusation, worse than death. Sirach 28, verse 15. Sirach chapter 28 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. 
a backbiting tongue. A what? A backbiting tongue mm -hmm. have cast out virtuous women Great. and deprived them of their labor. It says a backbiting tongue. What verse is that? Verse 15. No, give me 17. I want 17. Come on. Verse 17. Come on. The stroke of the whip. So the subject matter is the stroke of the whip. It says the stroke of the whip does what? Make it marks in the flesh. It make it marks in the flesh. They can be seen though. If you can see, if a person can see your pains, see your wound, they can help treat you. They come to your aid. They come to your uh, come to your to your uh, attention. But watch this. But the stroke of the tongue. But the what? The stroke of the tongue. Read. Breaketh the bones. Breaketh the bones. The stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. You understand? Is worse than a bruise. That's why in the article we just read, it says that psychological abuse has equal or even long lasting or more damaging effects than physical or sexual abuse. So the Bible, what, say what? The stroke of the whip make of marks in the flesh. That's true. But the stroke of the tongue break of bones. So guess what? What's, what's more harmful to our people? Think about it. What's more harmful to our people? The whips that our father so or them uh, telling them that you nothing, Jesus is white. What's more harmful to our people? You understand? Them raping our foremothers or them telling our foremothers that they were nothing. Only second, or if not even third, to the white woman. The white woman is first, second, you third, black woman. What's more harmful? What's more harmful? Them um, giving us, giving our forefathers less food to eat and starving them, or is it them telling us that what you are not the Israelites? The stroke of the tongue. You are, you, you, are, you are Gentiles. Y'all are ham mites. Y'all skin is cursed. Y'all are good for nothing but to be our slaves. It says, "Cursed be Cain. He gonna be a servant of servant shall he be." What was more harmful? The whips, the rapings, the beatings, the starvation, or was it all the words that were spoken against our forefathers? What was more harmful and devastating over a long period of time? Because I'm sure I don't want to feel no one's whip. I'm sure I don't want to be a victim of rape. I'm sure I don't want to be a victim of starvation. But I tell you what, those things died with our forefathers. But the lies that were told to them live on in our people who are still asleep. So which one? Which one breaking bones, really? You see, it's the things that were spoken that, that, that break bones. Break bones of people who are not even there. Read that again. Verse 17. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, mm -hmm. but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bone. The stroke of the tongue does what? Breaketh the bone. It breaketh the bones. Let's get wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 5, start at verse 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5, verse 4. Mm -hmm. We fools accounted his life madness. What did it say? We fools accounted his life madness. Three. And his end to be without honor. It says that fools have accounted our lives what? Madness. What are you doing? Hypercritical of everything that we do. You understand? It says we fools accounted his life madness and they have counted our end to be without honor. How many times we heard that? That end will be without honor. No, you'll never be nothing. You might not even graduate. You might even later see 18. How many of us heard that? Depending on what neighborhood we was from. If you make it to 18, it'll be old age for you. If you make it to 21, you're in your golden years. How many of us heard stuff like that? How many of us have our ends counted to be without honor? From the, I'm going to give you an example in our history. Let's get 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Let's go to the history now. Second Samuel 16. Start at verse 5. Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 5. And when and when King David came to Bethorum, behold, then thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, uh -huh. whose name was Shammai, uh -huh. the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. Mm -hmm. And he cast stones at David uh -huh. and at all the servants of the king. Of King David mm -hmm. and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. Mm -hmm. And thus said Shammai, when he cursed, come out, come out, the bloody man. Thou, I'm sorry, come out, come out, thou bloody man, mm -hmm. and thou man of Belial. So call him a man of Belial, man of the devil. Read on. The Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, mm -hmm. and whose stead thou hast reigned. The Lord, the reason why I'm going through this. Situation is because of all the wickedness that you've done in your past. Read on. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. Mm -hmm. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief mm -hmm. because thou art a bloody man. All this happened to you because you are a bloody man. So, 
Watch this, read on. Then said Abishai, the son of Zariah, unto the king, mm. Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Abishai, one of David's mighty men, said, Why should this dead dog be able to speak this way to you? You see what he called it? He called it cursing. He called David the devil. He said, Listen, everything that's happening to you is your own fault. Abishai called that cursing. How many of us have been cursed by our parents, cursed by relatives? Abishai said, Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king, to speak evil? to do false accusations, to call him the devil, to lie on him. The Bible calls that cursing. He said, why should this dead dog curse my Lord the King? Read on. Let me go over, I pray thee, mm. and take off his head. And he, the, he said, let me take his head off. That should be the judgment for talking to you like that, for cursing you and speaking evil over you like that. He said, let me go over and take his head off. Read on. Verse 10, mm -hmm. and the king said, what have I to do with you, ye sons of Zariah? So let him curse. What did David say? So let him curse. David said, let him curse. Let him curse. Let him speak great evil. Read on. Because the Lord has said unto him, mm -hmm. curse David. He said, the Lord put it into his heart to curse me. Read on. Who shall then say, mm -hmm. wherefore hast thou done so? You see that? He says, who shall stop him? The Lord put into his heart to do that. But guess what? There is a judgment. We got to rest in knowing that there, you see, David, David had a different spirit than us. David had a different spirit, and David knew, guess what? The Lord God would judge all things. The kings. Let's get kings. Kings chapter 2. First Kings chapter 2. And let's start at verse 8. First Kings chapter 2 and verse 8. Read. And behold, so, thou so now, I'm bringing out the speech. You know, David is on his deathbed talking to Solomon. For example, read verse... Uh, Read verse 2. Uh, first Kings chapter 2 and verse 2. David is on his deathbed. Go ahead. I go the way of all the earth. David told Solomon, I go the way of all the earth. Meaning what? If you, if you want his earth, you're going to die, right? So he says, I'm going to go the way of all the earth. I'm going to die like those who came before me. Read on. Be thou strong, therefore, mm. and show thyself a man. So because I'm about to die, show yourself a man, Solomon. So now, after he told him to, told him to keep God's commandments, he then gave him a couple, a couple instructions before he died. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. Mm. And behold, thou hast with thee Shemai. He says, oh, yeah, by the way, um, keep, keep God commandments and remember, Shemai is still alive. Read on. The son of Gera, mm -hmm. a Benjamite of Bahurim, Read. which cursed me. Which did what? Which cursed me. He cursed me. He told me I was the devil. He told me that um, I was going to fall into mischief. He told me all the evil in my life was based off my own doings. And David knew that those things are cursings. Many of us have been cursed by our parents. You understand? It's bad enough we're going to do 20, verse 15. Many of us, have, our own parents have cursed us. And they and they, they, they not blameless and perfect in God's eyes to be cursed us in the first place. So he said, what? Read that again. Which cursed me. I'm sorry. From the beginning. And behold, thou hast with thee Shemai. Shemai is still alive. Come on. The son of Gera, mm. a Benjamin of Bahurim, Read. which cursed me with a grievous curse Read. in the day when I went to Mahanam. Mm -hmm. But he came down to meet me at Jordan. Read. And I swear to him by the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will not put thee to death with the sword. So he didn't allow Abishai to kill him. Read on. Now therefore, hold him not guiltless. What did David tell Solomon? Hold him not guiltless. You see that? The most High God had already ordained judgment one day. We ought to just hold our peace and stand in spirit. David said, oh, no, no, no. He want to curse, let him curse. But there will be a future judgment. Read on. For thou art a wise man, Read. and knowest what thou oughtest to do unto him. Read. But his whore head, his whore head read. bring thou down to the grave with blood. With what? With blood. You see that thing? It was a judgment prepared for Shemai, for him cursing. It's a judgment prepared to those who have hurt us, whether it have been physical, verbal, psychological. It's a judgment prepared for them. Sometimes we can't see the judgment in the moment. That's because in the moment, only thing you're supposed to be doing is stand in the spirit. Only thing you're supposed to be doing is possessing your soul. And guess what? Over time, guess what? The Lord will align things so what they receive, they do judgment. From now, let's get um, let's get uh Matthew 13. Because guess what? Many of us were sized up, like I said, by teachers, parents, relatives, spouses, siblings. Um, our Lord went through the same thing. Matthew 13. Read verse 55. Christ was sized up. Watch this. Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Mm -hmm. Start at um, 54. Watch it. 
Matthew 13, 54. Uh -huh. And when he was come into his own co country, mm -hmm. he taught them in their synagogue, in so much that they were astonished. It says, when the Lord taught, it says, that in the synagogue, they was astonished. Read on. And said, whence hath this man this wisdom? They said, man, where does man get this wisdom from? Read on. And these mighty works. And how he, how he raising the dead and doing all this stuff, man? This stuff is not normal. Where you get these mighty works from? Come on. Is not this the carpenter's son? What they say? Is not this the carpenter's son? You know what this, you, you know kind of uh, verbal abuse is called or psychological abuse is called? This is called casual dismissal. Casual dismissal. They didn't say he had uh, the devil on him. They didn't say that, um, that he was a, a heretic. They didn't say that he was blasphemer. What did they say? Is not this the carpenter's son? Casual dismissal. Casual dismissal. Ain't this the carpenter's son? Ain't this Joseph boy? How many times have we been with casual business? Oh man, I got a new promotion. I got me a new car. Oh, your car? I got, oh, I see your little car. You know, I want this like something that's always look. I see your little car. You know, a little necklace. You know, your little necklace. I see you got your new little job. You know, make a little eighty thousand. You know, making a little. You know, making you a little money. Oh man, I just got married. All oh, praise to the most. I just got married. Oh. You tell me, oh, I see you got your little wife. Why well, everything I got to do got to be little? You, you, you don't talk to master like that. You don't talk to the heathens like that. But why don't we talk to each other like that? Oh, I see, I see, I see you got your little, you got your little mansion with your 50-foot uh, uh, ceilings. You got your little mansion. You know, I see you trying to do, uh, trying to do big things. I'm not doing big things. I, I, see, I see you trying to do big things. Casual dismissal. Christ suffered from casual dismissal. Christ was sized up. Read that again, verse 55. What did they say? Is not this the carpenter's son? They said, is not this the carpenter's son? Come on. Is not his mother called Mary? Ain't, ain't Mary his mama? He ain't nobody. Mary, Mary, normal Mary? Read on. And his brethren, James and Joseph mm. and Simon and Judas and his sisters, are they not all with us? Don't we know his sisters? He ain't nobody special. We know him. We know his sisters. This Joseph boy, what they what are they saying under the table? They saying he ain't nobody to be teaching the way he's teaching. He ain't nobody to be doing the miracles that he's doing. He ain't nobody. Who is he? Casual dismissal. Read. And they sisters, are they not all with us? Read. Then have this man all these things. So they said, because his family ain't nobody, he ain't nobody. So how's he doing these things? Casual dismantle. They sizing you up. Read. Verse 57. Mm -hmm. And they were offended in him. So what they say out of those words? They were offended in him. They were offended in him. They couldn't stand aside of him. They hated the fact that he was doing great works. They hated, they hated what he was doing in his life. Many people around you, they hate to see you doing good for yourself. So instead of them praising you, they can't because they mad that they haven't received certain milestones in their life. Instead of them just being a full-blown devil, they'll be a casual devil. Oh, I see your little house. Heard you got your little degree. Well, you, you, uh, you, you a neuroscientist now? Oh, neuroscientist. Okay. Yeah, I see you got your, you know, little science. I, I hated science personally. You know, but that's your thing. You know, it is what it is. You know, everybody got to make a way somehow, you know. From there, let's get, uh, let's get John 1. John 1. Let's get some more of that, what Christ went through. John 1. All these things are forms of abuse. John 1. Let's start at verse 46. John chapter 1 and verse 46. Start at 45. Verse 45. Come on. Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, mm -hmm. We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, huh? Jesus of Nazareth, mm -hmm. the son of Joseph. Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Come on. And Nathaniel said unto him, What they say? Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Sometimes you get sad based off where you're from. You understand? You're like, yeah, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm here. I'm applying for this job. No, where are you from? Uh, I'm from the west side of Chicago. Chicago? The west side? Um, well, I, I think um, I think the interview went well. I, I just found what you're talking about. Sometimes you get sad based off where you're from. Read on. Verse 46, mm -hmm. and Nathaniel said unto him, mm -hmm. Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Come on. Philip saith unto him, What? Come and see. Come and see. Come check it out for yourself. 
Give me a Matthew 12. Start verse um, 22. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 22. Mm. Then was brought unto him one, oh, I'm sorry. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, mm -hmm. blind and dumb. So it was my, then was brought to him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. No. And he healed him. And he healed him. He had three different demons on him. A, a demon, blind, dumb. He healed him. Read on. In so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. Read. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? What's the first thing they said? Is not this the son of David? And the son of David. Read on. Verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, mm -hmm. but by Beelzebub. Oh, he ain't doing nothing. You might get you a good job. Uh, bro, you said you are dealing with drugs on the side. Everything you do in your life, it must, if you, if you got anything good going for yourself, it, you must got it in an evil way. Uh, I, 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 just got, uh, I just got married, got me a new husband. So so we turn around. Uh, he, uh, she just went him cut for, for his money. He ain't no good. Uh, I just got me a new wife. So we so turn around. Oh, man, I heard she was a hoe anyway. Everything you do, it better be some type of negative undermining. You understand? All these things are what? Forms of abuse. You know. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, mm -hmm. but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Really? And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, mm -hmm. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Mm -hmm. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Really? And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. Mm -hmm. How shall then his kingdom stand? So keep in mind a lot of these things, right? The whole world, life and wickedness, right? Many of us hold on to things that have been said about us um, that was out of order, that was wicked, that was evil, that was uh, that was um, means for us to kind of evolve into certain defense mechanisms. Where now you isolate yourself, and you spend your life depressed, different things like that, right? But we must remember, now we're in this truth, we must take a step back about our mental mindset and just look at ourselves and see, and see, we read two articles, see where you line up inside these articles and see if you do any of these defense mechanisms or see if you're suffering from anxiety, stress, depression, loneliness. You understand? See if you hold on to these things. Why? Because the people who have said these things against you, they are not worthy to have words that last into your life in this truth. Coming back to the glory of who you are, coming back to your nationality, God's laws. The things that would evil that was done against you and spoken against you do not have the authority or the pleasure of making their way into this truth. They shouldn't have that much power. You understand? For example, Matthew 12, real quick. In verse 35, watch this. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Mm -hmm. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart mm -hmm. bringing forth good things. Three. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So it says a, a evil man out of the uh, the evil treasure of his heart, he bringing forth evil things. The whole earth, life, and wickedness. Now that we in this truth, what do you expect looking back at your life you were in the world? What do you expect looking back at the things that were said to you and done to you by your worldly parents? What do you expect from them besides wickedness? Because a, a good man bringing forth good out of the good treasure of his heart. But there is, goodness is keeping God's laws. The law is holy and just and good. So without God's laws, what? You are unholy, you are unjust. You are the opposite of good. I mean, you evil. So people are a product of what the society. So with that being said, Sirach 51. The only words that matter is what God said about us. The only thing that matter is what this Bible said about us. That's the only thing that matters. Our nationality, the covenant is ours. God says we're above all people. Those are the things that matter. Not what your wicked mama said when she was high one day. Not what your daddy said when he was drunk. You understand? Those things don't matter. Not what, not what your boyfriend when you were 20 years old told you to, broke, to break down and keep you on a leash. You understand? Those things don't matter. What matters is what God says and what this Bible says about us. Because they wanted to sign. Sirach 51, start at verse 2. Sirach chapter 51 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. for, though art, for thou art my defender and helper, and hast preserved my body from destruction mm -hmm. and from the snare of the slanderous tongue. It says, God is, start at verse 1. Verse 1. Watch this. I will thank thee, O Lord. What did it say? I will thank thee, 
O Lord and King, mm -hmm. and praise thee, O God, my Savior. Breathe. I do give praise unto thy name. Breathe. For thou art my defender and thou helper. Thou art my defender and helper. Read on. And hast preserved my body from destruction mm. and from the snare of the slanderous tongue. Breathe. And from the lips that for lies. Breathe. And has be and has been mine helper against mine adversary. So that it's God is our defender. God is our helper against those that slander us and forge lies. That's what the Bible says. It says, God will defend us and help us. Uh, he will preserve us from destruction and from the snare of the slander tongues. Many of us get snared in things that were spoken against us. The evil that was said to us. You understand that we carry on as what? Abuse and uh, psychological trauma. PTSD. It says God will deliver us from the snares of those things that were spoken. From the lies that were spoken against so get, um, get 2 Corinthians 4. Actually, give me Ecclesiastes 7. They words don't matter. Only with this Bible they matter. Ecclesiastes 7. And verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 21. Three. Also, take no heed unto all words that are spoken. It says, take no heed unto all words that are spoken. Read on. Lest thou hear thy servant. Curse thee. It says, "Let's what? Thy hear thy servant curse thee." So it says, "Don't take heed to all words that are spoken, because guess what? If you take heed to everything people say, you will find that people are going to speak evil of you. You understand? So it says, take no heed to all words that are spoken. Take what people say as a grain of salt. You don't keep God's laws. You're not Israel. You're not my leadership. You're not my brother. You're not my sister. You're not in this fight with me. I don't care what you say or have said before. We gotta let those things go." You understand? Because they are not worthy to, they, they, they words should not be able to live free in our minds without paying some type of rent. If, if they words going to live in our brains, I hope, I hope you demand some type of rent, pay a utility or something, because they words do not matter. Read that part again. For oftentimes, also thine own heart. Not from the top. Uh, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Also, take no heed unto all words that are spoken, mm. lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. Lest you hear what? Thy servant curse thee. Lest you hear your servant curse thee. From the jump over to um, um, 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4, start at verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. Mm. For God. Who commanded the light to shine out of darkness mm -hmm. has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the in the face of Jesus Christ. Read that thing again. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, mm -hmm. has shined in our hearts. It says, God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, he hath what shine in our hearts and our minds. Well, God has kind of worthy to what be in this truth. To put in his brick to bring forth Christ's kingdom. We can no longer allow things that were spoken against us that were harmful to what shape us into being who we are today. To give us excuses, oh well, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm still suffering from things, you know, my mama said that hurt me. Listen, we gotta let those things go in this truth. So so we can be the prophet that who God has called us to be. We all got a, a great spirit to grow into. You understand? You you might be five foot tall, but your spirit twenty feet. And you cannot grow into that spirit until you what? Let things from the world go. Let the evil that was done against you go. You understand? That's why forgiveness is so important. You understand? One, one thing you got to do is forgive. Uh, you you got to forgive yourself for believing that you were hurt and they said you were us. You got to forgive yourself for believing that you will amount to nothing. You got to forgive yourself for believing that for so long. And then dropping out of school because you believe that. You got to forgive yourself for being for believing that you were a whore or a whore monger only just like your daddy. And then spending your life perpetuating a slander from your parents, a slander from your teachers, a slander from people close to you. You got to forgive yourself for those things so you can grow into that 20 foot spirit that the Lord God has prepared for you. You know, you might be six foot tall, but your spirit is 30 feet. And you can't grow into that spirit by holding on to these things and carrying these things with you. This is that's not the, cro the cross that Christ is talking about. Um, read that again. Where you at? Verse Four. six. What? For God. Who commanded the light to shine out of darkness mm -hmm. has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We have the, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels mm -hmm. 
that the excellency of the power may be of God. It says the excellency of the power within us is of God, really. And not of us. So guess what? Your self-confidence, your self-esteem is not rooted in yourself in the first place. When you come to the truth, your confidence, your self-esteem, the glory of yourself should be rooted in the Most High. When David went against Goliath, he, 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 he wasn't walking up like, I'm David, and I ain't losing no battles. He, he walked up like, who's an uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You understand? So our our uh, power that's driving us got to be rooted in the Most High, and it's not about us. From the, give me um Philippians 3 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Three. Brethren, I count not myself that I have apprehended, mm. but this one thing I do, Three. forgetting those things which are behind. So it says we got to forget those things which are behind. Come on. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. That's you what? Growing in the spirit? You understand? That's you what? Applying the scriptures and then ultimately obtaining the kingdom. You understand? You grow and live in harmony. Iron sharpen that iron. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be that 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 rusty uh, knife, that rusty blade, that rusty sword that nobody want to come into contact with. So you, you must remember. Uh, read that again, brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended, mm -hmm. but this one thing I do: forgetting those things which are behind mm -hmm. and reaching forth to those things which are before. You see that? And reach forth to those things which are before you. Meaning what? The things that lies for you in the future. You got to reach for those things. From the Hebrews to Hebrews chapter two and verse one. Hebrews chapter two, verse one. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. And the things that, they, that that we have heard are the things that we have heard in this truth. The things we have heard since God has been dealing with us, with our nationality, and with the understanding that we must apply His laws. Those are the things we should give the most earnest heed to. Not what your boyfriend said back in 06. Not what your girlfriend said back in 2010. Not what, not what your fourth grade teacher told you. That you dumb and you stupid. You know what I'm saying? That you slow and you should be in LD or you should be in BD. Those are not the things that we should be holding on to. Those are not things that we should be giving the earnest heed to. We should be giving the earnest heed to things that we have learned under our leadership. Things we have learned since we have known our nationality and God's laws. Those are the things. Read that again. Verse one, mm. therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, mm. lest at any time we should let them slip. Let's say what? Lest at any time we should let them slip. Let's say any time we let these things slip, and then you start what? Afflicting yourself for your own counsel. You understand? The moment you step out of the Bible thinking about the good reports of the Bible, you start to what? Afflict yourself in your own counsel. God says not to do that. Jump, jump, jump to Philippians. And give me chapter 4 and verse 8. We got to give the most earnest to the things we have learned in this truth. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Three. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are honest, mm -hmm. whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are pure, come on, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are Lovely, come on. Whatsoever things are of good report. Whatsoever things that are of good report, come on. If there be any virtue. If there be any virtue or godliness, come on. And if there be any praise, mm -hmm. think on these things. It says think upon these things. That's what we should do. Think upon those things. We can no longer let what uh let what the world say define us. Let what our uh parents who, who were not repented define us. You understand? We have to let what this Bible say define us. And Christ comes in the value of the book. So guess what? You want to be like Christ? We got to let those things go. Let's get um, Sirach 28. Let's get Sirach 28. And let's so start of verse uh, 20. Sirach chapter 28, verse 20. Mm -hmm. For the yoke thereof is so a... So a, a yoke is a, a, a metal collar, right? A metal shackle, right? It's talking about um, the wicked things that were said to us. The psychological abuse that was spoken by the mouth, the verbal abuse that was spoken by the mouth, the mental abuse that was spoken by the mouth. You know what I'm saying? The Bible refers to that, those things that were spoken as a yoke. You know what I'm saying? You being chained up by those words. You know what I'm saying? You being a product or put into a situation based off of the words that were spoken to you. 
So it says the yoke thereof is a what? Is a yoke of iron. It's a yoke of iron. Iron is hard to break. It says the words that were spoken against us that were evil is a yoke of iron. I mean, it's difficult to break that. Come on. And the bands thereof are bands of brass. It says, and the bands thereof, you understand, are bands of brass. A, a, a band is something that you use to hold things together. Read on. Verse 21. Mm. The death thereof is an evil death. It says it's an evil death. Read. The grave were better than it. It says the grave is better than that, than that form of abuse. Come on. It shall not have rule over them. What did, what did it say for us in this truth? It shall not have rule over them uh -huh. that fear God. It, the Bible says those things that happen to us, we have to let those things go. It shall not have rule over us that fear God. You can't be in marriage like, oh, well, you know, growing up, my mother just told me that my, if I got married, my marriage would fail. No, it shall not have rule over them that fear God. What your mama said no longer matters. Oh, well, you know, my daddy told me that, you know, getting married, getting, getting married is for suckers. You know, I, I should just have to get, get as much as I can. You know, so nobody wants to be a husband. That should not have rule over those that fear God. Well, you know, I'm scared the teacher can't because, you know, I, you know, my, my, my mother and father always told me that I was a terrible speaker and I don't talk right. And, you know, anybody don't listen to me. Nobody want to hear me. It should not have rule over them that fear God, period. Read 20, read 20, um, 22. Verse 22. Read. It shall not have rule over them that fear God. Read. Neither shall they be burned with the flame thereof. Neither what? Neither shall they be burned with the flame thereof. Because remember, the tongue is a fire. But guess what? Those of us in this truth, we have to be built up on a level what? We should. We are not burnt with the flame thereof. We are mature enough to know that we should be praying for forgiveness for those who spoke evil, for they know not what they do. You understand? But whether they know or don't know, guess what? It's a judgment for it. Just like with Shemite and Benjamin who cursed our forefather David. You understand? So let's meditate on these things. Let's work on talking about these things. Our leadership. Let's work on healing. You understand? Let's take it day by day. You understand? All right. We're going to end it there. Are there any questions pertaining to today's class? Um, so this is right. I'm assuming that that's a question. How to correct a child without damaging uh, their senses. So when you correct a child, number one, of course, the Lord say beat them on the sides. Can you get that from me real quick? It's a rock. No, I won't rock. Sorry, 30. And um, look at verse 3. Keep that chastening. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, uh, he that chastised his son. So this to uh, how to how to correct your child without damaging their senses. He that chastises his son mm -hmm. shall have joy in him, and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. Mm -hmm. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, mm -hmm. and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Mm -hmm. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead, mm -hmm. for he hath left one behind him that is like himself. Right, so now jump down to um verse eight, I think it is. And a horse not broken. So it says a horse not broken, meaning you must train your child. You know? Becoming headstrong. They, they become headstrong or hard headed. They they become self will. Come on. And a child left to himself mm -hmm. will be willful. And a child left to himself will be willful. Read on. Conquer that child. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, conquer thy child. Mm -hmm. And he shall make thee afraid. If you conquer them or you baby them, pamper them, let them get away with everything. It says they shall make you afraid over time. Read it. Play with him, mm -hmm. and he will bring thee to heaviness. So the Bible tells us to beat our children on the sides. So with that understanding, that doesn't mean that um, that's the only form of education for your child or instruction for your child. It's just that, you know what, I'm, someone's going to whoop them. The thing is, whatever they're doing, have you told them before not to do it? You don't want to really whoop your child for doing something wrong unless it's extreme. Unless it's extreme. Uh, the very first time they do it, the very first time that they do something wrong, it can be a a, a, a talking to, 
hey, um, uh, don't don't knock over uh, the cereal like that ever again. Terrible example, but <laughs> that's all I got. Stop knocking over the cereal. Don't do that. You know, now they know that you just gave them a new law in your house. Don't knock over the cereal, spill the milk everywhere. Now the next time they do it, guess what? You can either talk to them a second time, or more than likely, now you now you spank them on the sides. But you don't want to be that parent who just constantly think that um, whooping your child is just the best idea on the, in, the, in the world. It's not all, always the case. You understand? And also, I want to quote Galatians. Let's get Galatians real quick. Because um, that uh, whooping should not be the only form of education or, or correction. So let's get Galatians. And let's get chapter 4. Galatians 4. And start at verse... Um, one Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, uh, when, when your heir is a child, I mean, they a child, come on, differeth, differeth nothing from a servant. It says when you when uh, when you have children, they differ nothing from servants, they they both are listen and obey. You know what I'm saying? They don't have their own mind. It says they differ nothing from a servant, you know, though he be lord of all, even though he. In this case, this is the heir. He's still different enough from a servant, even though he lord of all. This is my who going to uh, follow his father's stead as king when his father passes on. Read on. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. So guess what? Your children should be what? Constantly being nurtured. The Bible says, talk about them uh, by the way. Make them understand judgment. For example, like um, at, at times, right? I, I, got, I got three daughters. So one of my daughters, uh, my oldest, she's six, Leah. She may... Um, um, hit hit my younger daughter Sarah. I might call her over. Oh no, actually Sarah might do something to my younger daughter Amir. I use that example. Sarah might hit my younger daughter Amir, right? I call uh, Leah and Sarah both over. Leah being the oldest, and I say Sarah just hit Amir. What do you think the judgment is? And she might say, um, I don't know. I'm like, well, she just hit her. Amir's crying. What, what what do you think the punishment should be? She might say, um, maybe you should whoop her. I like that whoop her. And let her explain to me why it's a good idea. So guess what happens? Now she understands judgment. So guess what she's going to do with her own actions? She's going she gonna to learn to examine herself and walk more carefully, understanding that with every action, there's a consequence. So that's one thing you got to do. You have, they have to be under tutors and governments. You have to always be educating them. They should be understanding judgment. This way, it, it, you don't want to ever deal with them when you're angry. You don't, don't want to whoop them when you're angry. You don't want to correct them when you're angry. If you're mad as hell, just have, tell them to get a seat. And you, you, you just go back to that later. Put a little tab right there and just make sure you deal with them later. Once you, the heart ain't beating in your throat no more and your blood pressure ain't through the roof no more, then you go back to them and then you say, hey, you know what? Um, so what happened earlier? Why did you do that? Why did that happen? Sometimes if you ask why five or six times, you actually get a real answer. You know, why'd you do that? I don't know, but why'd you do it? Um, I seen, well, well, why'd you do it? I don't know. I thought I went, but why'd you do it? Oh, I, I wanted it. Okay, but is it yours? You can finally get someone. So what you want to do, you, you want to get them to think for themselves. All right, so that's one way you can do it, by breaking them down and dealing with them with emotion. Um, I think that was the only question. All right, Israel. Um, most of Christ bless y'all. Um, what do we stand in the spirit? Let's endure. Let's meditate on James 1.16. And let's just keep it moving, all right? Most of Christ bless you all. Shalom.
would sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it sounds wrong, man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.